All right, in this segment of the series, we're looking for three ounce nuggets. Everybody has a scale for those, their thumb size. Just look at your thumb, that's what you're looking for. That's what a three ounce nugget typically looks like. To do this, we're going to right to the Canadian border up north of Oroville, Washington, on the Similkameen River. Now, in my day, there was an area called Miner's Flats. That was your access point for everyone back then. It was dredged to death, and that was a good thing, because what I learned was that entire riffle system was false bedrock, and I'm going to give you a way to get through that. All right, this is the same spud bar you saw me throwing in my 40s. I'm now in my 60s. And the key to throwing it, you're going to throw it like a dart. And uh, once you throw it, you, you loosen your grip and let it go. And it'll cut that bedrock like butter. Um, if you try to catch it, not only will it tear up your hands, got gloves on or not, but it will uh, throw your back out. So don't try to catch it. You just pick it up, grab it out midway, and let the bar do the work. Let it go. This is big gold, but it's a little complicated. So not everybody's going to want to tackle a project like this. Now, I don't think my contemporaries realized just how much I went to Oroville, Washington. But I had my eyes on that once I learned that there were these big nuggets that would come out of here. Um, there's also another, other metal detecting opportunities. Um, north of Okanagan, now I'm talking about where the Tenasket joins the river system there, the road joins the river system. North of that was the tent city of the original Okanagan. That was a tent city up on the, up on the flats up over the river, and you have a shot at the same um, uh, type of gold coins that we talked about in our New Mexico or series gold camp. I'll put that link down at the bottom if you want to take a look at those gold coins. So for this site north of Oroville, we're going to do this in a specific way. Now, one year I took, I towed a sea dory boat out here to camp in, because this is one of those areas where you need all your clothes in one day. Uh, it's very cold at night, very hot in the daytime in the summertime. But the sea dory had a uh, diesel heater in it, and, you know, other people are out there camping out in tents, freezing to death because they've been in the water that day. And, uh, you know, I'm in short sleeve shirts and inside this boat. The trouble with that idea was it drew a lot of attention. So think about all those things. There's another thing, too. In my day, there was something called a golden fish book. Maybe they still have it. All you had to do was, was have that in your possession and you were legal to do whatever you were going to do, uh, you know, within reason. Couldn't dig, dig into the banks, that sort of thing. But that's all you needed to do to go looking for gold. Probably some similar thing today, but you're going to have to figure that out because they, they are uh, very aggressive in Washington State. Um, Let's go to look at Miner's Flat. Miner's Flat has a, a ripple system, and it's not only here. If you don't have access to that, you're going to look for that in this river up on the, just cruise the road and look for that ripple system. All right, and checking it right now, Miner's Flat campground is still here, right here, but this doesn't do you any good. This is deep water right here. You, the area I'm specifically talking about is right here to the north. Coochie number four is your access. The gold coming down from Canada, they've shut that off, is big gold. 
and uh, these nuggets to be three ounces were once tremendous size up, uh, up north of the line. Now, there was a um, show, TV show at one time, Hunter Ellis was the star, you know, the star, uh, called Tactical to Practical in the early, late 90s, early 2000s. It was the only show I ever made a pilot for out of all the ones that we, you know, been approached on. I really wanted to be on that show. And I talked to um, Bob Frogfoot, Frogfoot Weller, uh, who sent me out west from the 1715 Treasure Fleet stuff um, about that. And I, for the demo, I used a Garrett XL 500 Pulse metal detector to do my little bit. And uh, I threw that on YouTube. That's an old, old film shot with a first-generation camera. And uh, all that to say this, they still make a version. This was made, this was the original Pulse metal detector by Eric Foster. Just an on-off thing, just very simple. But very effective because a Pulse shoots, you're shooting voltage into or out of the coil, and then it turns off and it listens. It's kind of, if you think about sonar, it's not sonar, but if you think about sonar, you kind of get the idea. And it's looking for a rate of decay. The bottom line is it shoots very, very deep. Uh, the, I'll show you what the Garrett XL 500 is today. And if you can't come up with that, Look for it, and they no longer make it a, a Garrett Infinium, which is a it's, it's kind of a thoroughbred. It's a little tricky to use, not as easy as the XL500, but it'll give you a low high tone. Or look for any pulse detector that's waterproof. You don't have to worry about it because you are going to get wet. Don't get your good metal detector down here where I'm telling you about because you you are gonna get it wet, whatever it is. Um, and try to try to find something that'll pulse that'll shoot deep, Pref preferably on off. This is an all or nothing game, and if you come up with well, a three ounce nugget sold as a specimen, go to eBay and start looking for specimen gold, and come up with your own prices for that one piece that looks the, the right kind of way you know, could, could change your life. So this has got a better chance than winning the lottery here. All right. To cut through the, the false bedrock. Now, what I was watching, all those trips to Oroville, I was watching as the dredgers are cleaning out. They're going, then it kind of looks like this sheet of paper. They're cleaning out, cleaning out, cleaning out. Well, they're making that right because you can wade this uh, to just go along and we're going to go along with our metal detector and wait till we get a signal we're going to pop through that false bedrock with something you saw me using underwater many times in, in the underwater footage we used to do um, and that is our uh, spud bar okay and, and you're going to pop through that once you got a signal and dig out what's in the uh, pocket down below it. That could be a hot rock. That could be an enormous piece of gold. We don't know. You go on now if you go up north of uh, Miners Flats along the road you'll see this little area uh, and it is uh, loaded with what I call fluggets. They're not flakes, they're not nuggets, they're somewhere in between. And even more important than that are um, pyrup garnet, which is a, but a diamond indicator. Uh, they, they're formed in the same instant that a diamond is formed in a kimberlite pipe. So, uh, you know, those are in the mix too, somewhere around there, and they have found diamonds in Canada, certainly. 
So there you go. I know that again, I know this was quick, but you know, that's all about all the information you need. You know where you know where the gold is and you know what how I was gonna develop this thing and what I was thinking at the time. Good luck. Good luck with your prospecting. And uh, until we get to the next site, see you soon.